Nasty weather. It's cold outside. Hopefully you guys can see me real quick before I jump into this. I know. Real quick videos and uh, bass and bonsai, they don't really go together, do they? I want to give you guys a real quick rundown on the channel. If you're not familiar with the cha channel, subscribe. If you're just here to learn how to uh, cut these down or you're just interested in it, like where did these come from, give me a minute. If you remember right, I just got this reel in and it is the wrong one, right? You guys know what I'm talking about? Sent me a left hand. Dirty dogs. I high road to China. I'm about ready to burn that bridge down. So anyway, I got a brand new reel that I have no use for. They give me the process in order to send it back and all that, but I don't know if I want to do that yet because I think one of you guys may actually want to buy it. So I'm going to offer this if Jay, if you're watching, uh, you know who you are. I'm going to offer this to Jay. If he don't want it, you guys can comment below here and jump in the next in line. But the, here's the offer I'm making. I also bought this one from a guy off of BFS Fishing. Just to try out. I bought a package deal. I bought three reels from him. One was uh, left-handed. I don't like this. That may be the only thing me and the reel test have in common. We do not like uh, fishing with reels with left hand retrieve. We cast with our right hand, we switch hands, and we reel with our right hands. So I've got a dilemma. I've got the brand new one I don't have any use for. I could go through the process, send them back. And I've got this one. So I'm going to try to sell both of these as a package deal for $110 shipped. It's basically $55 a piece. I know this is uh, 70 whatever they are new. And it definitely has a little wear. If you really look, there's a few fine scratches. This is one. I didn't put any scratches on it. This is, if you watch my video, I fished it for like, a little bit throughout the day here and there, but it's got a few little scuffs here and there. It's definitely been fished, but I gave $70 just for this, and I don't even remember what I gave for this. But anyway, $110 ship, basically get 55 piece. Of course, it's going to cost me $10 to ship them, so 50 a piece. If you guys want those, get in line. Jim or Jay, if you want them, let me know, and uh, we'll go from there. If you guys are interested and you say, hey, I want next in line, then let me know. If not, if I don't hear anything back in the next day, I have till like January 17th to send the one back. And then maybe we'll smash this one on my, with my 45-pound dumbbell just for the fun of it. Just to make all the lefties and kayak users and the guys with the Dodge trucks and the big wide mirrors sticking out to make you all mad. But seriously, let's jump on to what this video is about. If you just joined in and you want to know how to make the single lifestyle handle and i just a name i gave it because of uh lychee style which i don't even know if they're still in business do you guys know anybody somebody there was a uh, knobs going around right focus oh my god it won't focus right there these lychee style knobs awesome knobs and i just when i started making these handles i just choop, and i think one of the first handles i made i put this lychee style on i was like oh single lifestyle you know single knob single lifestyle that's where the name come from the process was because i was trying to i was just trying to shave weight off of uh daiwa pixie or the alphas you know i was just trying to get one to kind of get close to the Aldebarans. That was the whole start of this. And then once I started using the reels, I like the way they work. And I don't know, I just feel like a double handle gets in my way. So there is a drawback though. Let me make this clear before you guys, because I, I don't sell these, I'm, not, I'm just gonna show you guys how to make one if you wanna make one. Here's the drawback. And it's not with every reel and it's not with every person. But for sure, if you have your, you know, I tend to, when I stop reeling, or before I cast, I, I usually, I don't know, I have a weird thing about making sure the handle's a certain way. I do even do it with doubles. I've catch myself, and I, if you watch the reel test when he's out there doing shootout things, and I think a lot of guys do, we just tend to, like, I don't like casting with the thing up here when I grab, I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain. So, the downfall to a single lifestyle, and that's why you don't see a bunch of reels with them, is so you engage and when you go to cast, if you cast real hard and this handle is up here, anywhere in you know this position up, what can happen is it can engage that reel, the force. When you go like that and you stop, you can engage the reel. 
And I don't know if I can intentionally do it or not. Probably not. Because some reels, when you when you hit the thing, they uh they actually have a they have a little movement before they stop. And so what you do is when you cast and that little thing jumps, it, it engages a reel. So that's just a it can happen. That's a little disclaimer. If any of you guys like make one and go, well, Charlie didn't tell me that that could, it can happen. I've actually got it on one video. It only happens to me on rare occasions. Uh, Charles has the original Black Knight. And for whatever reason, he's got like a 95 millimeter handle on it with the bigger knob. And that reel, it did it to me like once or twice while I was using it. But I can honestly say that all of my fishing, you guys have seen all the videos I've put out over the last several years since I started doing this. I, none of my reels. I, it does not bother me. It doesn't mess with me. I, I, don't, I don't have it happen. I know old Daiwas are susceptible to it because they have a, I wouldn't call it a weak clutch. It's a very re, uh, refined uh, clutch system that makes it easy for the caster, if you're out using it all day, to uh, disengage and engage that clutch. So if you leave that handle up there on something with an easy clutch, I guarantee you it will happen. Now what I found back in the day when I first started, I had some Abus and those older Daiwas. And my son, he had Daiwa that he it happened to him on. So anyway, that is just the disclaimer. The single lifestyle is not for everybody. Okay? Single lifestyle handles are not for everybody. So I'm going to also try to hurry up. I'm going to show you how to make that. It's a very simple process. I'm going to have to get the camera around here. But I'm also going to show you. I want to talk about this real quick. I know. My videos are never real quick. This Kawa K-A-W-A handle had come in. And it's cheap. 13 bucks. Man, that thing is awesome. For $13. You can get gold, red, black. Is that it? Not a lot of color options on these, but you could get black if you don't, you know, you just want to stay a neutral color or red anodized or gold. But they come, the knob is like this. And as you've seen in some of my videos, I cut down my own and stuff like that. So I've already cut this one down. I may show you cutting this one down, how I go about shaving them down, reshaping. You can shape anything that is basically a pressed cork, EVA, or even wood, you know, you don't want to mess with aluminum. I don't anyway. I'm not saying you can't. I'm not going to do it. But uh, the cork type stuff like this one, I shaved back. Down. I don't even remember exactly where these came from or what these are off of. But I shaved like that down. I shaved that one down. That's off one of the old Abu Garcia. Uh, was that Abu Garcia? Or no, Lose, the uh, Pro Light or whatever knobs. So. For $13, this 80 millimeter, you can look on AliExpress and you can find different length ones. And I was going to show you real quick that if you go on there, and I've talked about it when this one came in or when I talked about it, and you're watching them and you you want, say you want an 80 millimeter, you want a 90 millimeter, you, 90 millimeter, you want a 95, you want to be specific, right? Well, you got to look and make sure what they're showing you because this one is advertised at being, and they measure it like this. I think they call it this one. So if you're on there looking and one says it's 105 and you look and they're measuring it like this, end to end, the very end of the handle itself, not the center of the post, you know, from center to center. They're out here on the outside. You can pretty much, not, I'm not saying 100% sure, but it's almost a 10 millimeter difference. Pretty much. It's a pretty accurately to say if they're out here measuring just like this one and they're calling it you know, well, let me get on it. And they're calling it 90. You can rest assured it's going to be 80. If they're calling it 100, it's going to be 90. 105 is what a lot of them I've seen say, and it's actually 95 millimeter. You know, same thing if they're calling it a 95. Make sure if you're wanting a 95, if they're measuring it like this, you don't want that one. That's only 85, okay? So we've covered that part. That's you got to watch out for them on AliExpress. They're... It's kind of nice that they show you that because, but you have to use the, your own judgment and pay attention to what they're saying in the picture. They're showing you that they measured it wrong, so the measurements can be wrong. So anyway, let's get to it. What do you need to do this? 
And I, in the video of unboxing this, I showed you the uh, parts that this is more like a Shimano one. So we're going to take this off real quick. And you don't have to disassemble, technically, to do this you do. So we're going to cut that one down, but before we do that, we're going to take this off because what we're going to cut, and I'll show you in a minute, we're going to cut this part off. So we're going to save all these parts. Now we have a whole extra, for me anyway, since all of my reels are single lifestyle, I have all these extra parts around. So what we have here, and I did go through and I, uh, they came, one was real tight and one was loose and I, I switched shims around. But as you can see, just with what they gave me, they gave me, you know, comes with bearings and shims, this knob. And I will, I'll, I'll put the link to this one, but you want to go on AliExpress and look at yourself if you want something longer. A lot of guys don't like 80 millimeter. I like 80 millimeter. And that's going to be nice. When I get it cut down, that's going to be very nice. Uh, knob handle and all just took me a few minutes, as you'll see, to get it cut into shape. And then I'm left with a whole extra one I can use for whatever to put on a different handle at some point. So anyway, what we'll do first is we'll cut this down. I'm going to leave this one on it. I don't need to take it off. I'll show you. You don't have to take that off. So I'm going to cut this off, shape it, talk about it real quick, and then I'll do this one. This is actually easier to do on graphite than this is to cut down. This is harder than uh, taking a handle and turning it into one. So real quick, I'm leaving this on. At first I started, I would do them. I would just, I would take that off because I didn't want to, you know, mess up my little uh, keeper retainer. But I like to leave, just leave that on and use it as a guideline because what you're going to want to do, I'm going to fire up this Dremel with the cutoff wheel. If you guys can see the gap right here, I want to make a perfect like half circle leaving that gap all the way around this. So I'm using that as a guideline. Graphite's real simple because I'm going to cut it off and around it. I'm going to kind of smooth it out even with just a cutoff wheel or a sanding disc and then I'm just going to sand it smooth to where it matches up to this and I'll be done. That's that simple with graphite. If you decide you want to do an aluminum when you're like, I'm bound to determine I want to do aluminum. Well, as you can see, I kind of did this one a little wrong. See how I went in a little further? And if you look, really look, you can see the little keeper underneath that. I That is one of my first ones I did back a couple years ago. I should have carried that out a little further. You don't really notice. You can't, it's like one of those, you know, you got to get nitpicky, but like here's one I did right. See how, if you really look in there, you can see that, but it's flush, you know, it looks good. It's just a cleaner, it's a cl little bit cleaner look. But back in some of my first ones, but if you're doing aluminum, here's the deal. You, you technically really need to de-anodize the aluminum if they come, whether they're black, whatever, if they got like a smoke or whatever, you know, because you can't buy aluminum that is already a uh, gunmetal color. Aluminum is just aluminum. That's been like treated in some way or form, usually a little bit of uh, anodization to get it a darker color. So once you cut that and, and you know, sand, buff, polish, whatever, you almost need to deanodize the whole aluminum thing and, and treat all the aluminum the way you did where you clean that up in order to have it all look the same. So no, you can't, I can anyway, take like a red anodized handle and single lifestyle it without it looking a little weird. Now technically you could, I think Charles even did it. Say if I had a red one, I, I just wanted to single lifestyle a red one. Now what I could do is if you take your time, be careful, get the cuts right, you can actually just basically sand off this outer part and leave this side and this side whatever color and so then you basically will just have a silver ring all the way around it and that that can be done I don't I just either deanodize one when I want aluminum one or and you can see like with the lingo I think it looks good with either or carbon fiber easiest to work with and so I ordered this one, 13 bucks. I'm gonna order the red one, the black one, and maybe another gold one. I'm gonna order a few more since they're only 13 bucks and I have several 80 millimeter ones sitting around. As you can see, I've already got, uh, I'm waiting on a few more reels, but I've already got a few extras. All the reels over there I already have them on it. But you can never have too many handles, right? Especially when they're cheap. Okay, so the tools you'll need to do this it's pretty simple. Uh, 
Well, it's simple until I've realized I don't know where my sandpaper. This is a new sheet, but I've got one upstairs I use. This is wet or dry. So when I do my final graphite, I like to do it with the wet. And I will tell you real quick, you got to watch some of the cheap ones, even some of the new, like even, it could be any graphite. Anytime you're dealing with a, a carbon fiber graphite sheet of any sheeting of any kind, it can have edges that could be sharp, like where it's starting to flake off and could get you. Like in the, back in the RC days, what a lot of guys would do if they get a carbon fiber chassis, they'd take it in rough sand all the way around it and then they would run super glue all the way around it. Because these can, the way this is pressed, technically it could start flaking off. Especially in RC cars, if you ever ran one, you know, when you have crashes or something. So super glue just kind of helps give a little security on helps keeping it together. Now I'm not going to do that on mine, but I did notice that one of these, if this one I already took off or this one, one of them had a rough spot and I, I, all I did, it, it's not a hard process, but if you get any carbon fiber handle, whether it be a cheap one off AliExpress or even an expensive one, you can kind of fill it. And if it, you fill a rough spot, I just kind of, I doll it up with whatever, just so, cause you want to feel lightly because those things, if you get a little splinter sticking off, it can be as sharp as a needle and you just happen to grab, go to grab your reel and all of a sudden, next thing you know, you got about an eighth of an inch of a freaking piece of carbon fiber stuck in you and you're fishing day, you're like, oh man, it's my trigger finger. But anyway, so just double check your carbon fiber. That's all I'm trying to say there. I'm going to use this for the final touches. You'll need a Dremel tool. You can see I've got a very expensive one. It's actually one of the cheapest ones you can get. Just two speed. Low and whoa, high. These we'll use for different other things. Uh, now you only really need this and a little bit of sandpaper. Maybe a rougher sheet if I got one. Just some kind of rougher sheet to get it smoothed down from what the cutoff wheel does and then a final it doesn't have to be, you know, you don't have to go through 50 million different grades and grits of uh, sandpaper. Then to do the knob that we're doing, you actually need more there. You'll need something, and I guess I might try to show you, uh, you'll need something to cut down to get the knob shape, you know, to basically cut it down. We're basically turning this into a lathe, and then we're going to cut it down by hand instead of actually, you know, how the lathe bit runs in and you can set it and all fine tune. We're not fine tuning none of that stuff like that. So then the other thing you'll need to turn the Dremel into that is basically this. And this, all this started out was, it's just one of those little, uh, you know, basically what this is, where you can take off the different sanding deals, that's the little one. And this just so happens to fit perfectly on wherever it is. I think I did sand that down a little bit, basically putting the Dremel and ran this on it just lightly to get it just a little bit smaller. But then you'll need some sort of knob, could be one of the ones you just got if you want a chance. You usually won't mess it up, but I would suggest using one you don't plan on using, which I have a bunch laying around. And so that's just going to run down on there and then you'll tighten it with the screwdriver. But before you do that, I run this tape and I want the tape to just, you know, where that fits tight and I'll show you that here in a second but before we go to that we're going to use a cutoff wheel and we're going to cut this down and I'm going to try to figure out how to move this camera hold still we're moving you guys to where you guys can see what I'm doing whoa ah, that should be good that was easy enough all right anybody still with me here we go you guys wanted to see it oh no and yeah, I know, I should wear gloves and a dust mask and all that. Just as you're cutting, <laughs> blow the dust away from you, right? Okay, so I'm going to try to do this. I may get veered off because I'm not going to try to look through this camera. I'm not like uh, Derek Shepard on Grey's Anatomy. I'm not that good at looking through the viewfinder. So all I'm going to do first is I'm almost going to cut it off in like a V. I'm just going to kind of cut up this way. I'm going to cut this way until I get this part off out of the way, and then I'll shape it. And so it shouldn't take that long. It's a pretty simple process. Buckle up. Hang on. Here we go. Okay. Wow. 
Wasn't that easy? Okay, step by step. Okay, single lifestyle. Slap it on your reel. You're good to go. Who cares what it looks like? No. Then we're going to use this just as like a sanding. I mean, I could go on and put one of these on and all that kind of stuff, but I'm not going to do that. So hang on. We're going to just smooth it down some. We're almost there. Hang on. Okay. I got a little crazy there. I'm trying to that's why I usually don't do most of this with you guys along because it's hard to like I got the camera in between me and what I'm doing but there it is it's that simple I got it cut down now I'm gonna smooth it like I said with uh, you can do it several ways I could put on that other sanding thing what I tend to do is now you can take this off and this one's the first one I've seen like this it just slides like right off you don't even have to really take the screw all the way out of the way so anyway it's that simple and then just sand that down a little if you want or sometimes that drip like you just happen to get like you did a good enough job that where you just go straight to you know go up to a sink or somewhere and rough sand it with this until you just get it to you know that you're fine tuning it now you're just getting it to where it looks good you've got all the cutting done so I'm not gonna go into all that cuz that you know that could take an extra five or ten minutes I'll get in there and make sure it's all you know perfect but it really it's almost there already it that you're just a few steps away from fine-tuning it with you know a couple different sheets of sandpaper so that's pretty much done right you guys see it that quick I mean it it can be that quick it's actually quicker if I'm not sitting here talking about it trying to explain it. I can make like a couple and no problem real quick and be done so now let's go to the here's the hard part or can be the hard part for me anyway I'm going to try to hurry up and make this one done because dinner uh, just arrived at the house. Street tacos. You guys eat street? It's not even. Is this Tuesday? No, this is Wednesday. That Chipotle last night. Okay, so like I mentioned, get your little deal out. If you don't have one of these, I, I think most of your hardware stores or Walmarts or Lowe's, Home Depots, you can, I don't know if you can buy just this bit. Say if you already have a Dremel. You might have to buy a little kit that comes with some of that. So basically just put that in there. Now you do, do want to make sure everything's straight. And so, oh man, I got this kind of in a weird spot. So then you take this. Now I always put it this way. Technically, I guess you could go either way, but I, I put it on just like it was going to set on. And then you're going to put this on here. And if you come up with a different way to do this part, then more power to you. I'm not saying this is 100% perfect, but you're going to make sure everything's tightened up. And no, I'm not going to make this one. You guys, the hardest part would be trying to make a match the other one, but I'm not going to try to do that. So I got that tightened, and that's just a, for security. But then I also, I actually push this down. In my mind, the closer to this center, the straighter it'll be. So you see that? We've got a pretty good, you know, it's not wobbling. If you get that on and it's the, the top's like, whoa, 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 you're, you're something's wrong. You don't want to do that. It's, you're, it's not going to work right. So you're going to make sure it's like that. And then it's pretty simple from here. I'm going to try to get this camera down a little bit further so I don't have this up in my face. So then you just take, or I take, and I know what side of the bit, you know, I'm wanting this little sharp edge. 
And I'm just going to use it to cut down. I kind of hold my hands together to, you know, where I can set and fine tune it. But really, it's real simple. You just start cutting down, just like you would on a lathe. You know, it depends on what you want. If you know you got to cut a lot, you don't want to dig too deep. You don't want to take a little off at a time. I know, I'm going deep. And then, this is like a rough cutting. This is hard to do. So on this one, I know I'm going like way smaller. Hang on, I gotta figure out how. I'm trying to do it to show you guys and so I can see what's going on on this part of the rack. So say if you just wanted a little smaller, and you can, you know, as you're going. Now when you get to a point and you're going, oh man, it's got all these cuts in it. Well, you can slow down and smooth those out. And then you can turn, if you're using a bit, you can kind of turn it on its side. And get that smoother. But then say you're like, okay, get off here, I'll show you what it looks like. It's got the lines in it right well that's not a big deal because you need to get down we got to go a lot smaller so i'm just kind of cutting it down and i could cut faster but i don't want to scare any of you guys Smell that rubber burning. Rubberized cork. I kind of like to get my shape, even though it's big. So I'm gonna make this skinnier because it, that that bulb sticks too far that way for me. So I, I know I'm gonna be down shallow. So I'm going to try to wrap this up in 30 minutes. So I'm not going to finish the exact shape I'm going to do. I'm going to show you how I go from here. So let's say I want to get it smooth. There's a couple ways I can do that. I can take my time and I can turn this like this. But anyway, let's pretend I was already way down there. So if you want to, before you get to your final, how thin you think you want this or how small, you're going to want to go away from that and then use what I, I use is like this. And I'm just going to hold it on there, you know, just as a piece of sand. You could use a chunk of sandpaper, but this is about the right grit that I like. So I'll show you that real quick. So let me... So yeah, now that is not where I'm going to leave it. But you be honest, sometimes you take up, you know, if you're like, oh, I don't know, you know, take it off, put it on, blow, blow all this <laughs> dust off of you. And sometimes you'll be surprised a weird looking shape may feel better than what you're wanting. But this one, and I'm not going to finish this. I'm going to end this video right now. It's only 30 minutes. We're going to keep it right there. This is going to be a little bit smaller. I... Or eh, maybe close, but I think I'm going to get it a, a little bit smaller, especially right in here. So anyway, guys, it's that simple. And then really, this is finished. I leave it. I kind of like mine with, uh, and that's what I did with this one. Whatever grit this is, I don't know. I just 
happened to use it and it worked and when I got done I liked that feel. I find with me anyway on the whether it be this uh, rubberized cork or regular cork or whatever if, if you get to sanding too fine of a grit in my mind it just makes it slicker like it, it I don't want it that smooth I, I want a little bit of a textured feel it's just a, I guess what I prefer that's why some of mine like that knob I actually like those ridges in it if you guys can see it I left them on that one on purpose so anyway hopefully you like the video that's that's it's that simple that's how you make them and I got I gotta go eat and I gotta get all this dust off me so as I get out of here like I mentioned if you want and then don't throw this away I'll tell you in another video what you can do with these chunks that you got left laying around they turn into washers I'll explain that at some point all right, guys, thanks for watching. We got a mess here to clean up. I still got to come down here and shape that knob, but we've already got this is done. Other, well, a little bit of fine tuning. And I don't know, I may try to stick that on the lingual. What do you guys think? Think it'd look good on the lingual? I think it'd go right with the lingual, no problem. I think that'd look pretty good. I don't know, it may look better in this. Yeah, I think it may look better than the one I got on there now. I don't know. Stay tuned. If you think you may want in on these reels I'm selling, if Jay don't want them, somebody, somebody will want them. And uh, I got videos coming out as I get out of here. I know my videos are never short. I'm getting ready to drop. Uh, is it starting tomorrow? My most, the uh, best trip that we had in 2021 me and Charles hit a pit, and it was game on. Now, you saw the other videos. I put had to put three videos together, the one with the lingual, the one with the golden mud carp, and then the kind of all of them, but basically NRX rods. Those three videos were from one single day, but that was the week after. The week before, the week right after I caught my personal best, me and Charles went to this other place, and it was lights out, like fish after fish after fish and so that i want you guys to watch that video i'm, I'm putting it or videos i've got one and two made and i probably got another three or four to make in there one's half hour one's 25 minutes so far i just once i come to a stopping point around 25 to minutes to a half hour i'm stopping it it'll be one through could be up to four or five at least four maybe five could be six i don't know but it's kind of like that full day of fishing so when you guys get time to watch those and I know some of you don't like longer videos. Some of you don't mind watching it kind of like you're along for the ride. Because there's almost like full of bloopers and all kinds of, well, let's just face it, stupid stuff that we do, right? And a lot of that will be left in on this video. Because there was a bunch of fish and I started to try to edit. And I'm like, it's just, I'll just kind of, you know, each basic fish catch is pretty much strung together. And you'll get an idea of just and that's another thing i'll talk about in videos about finding good spots to fish that is one of the key things about being a good fisherman right anyway guys some bombs i